Booze. If I catch him, I'll ram his corkscrew right up his dirty little nose. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Help! 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 Ah! No, there's nothing here. I'm only a poor old man. There's no money here. Me son will be in in a minute. Help! I know. You, you wouldn't have a poor old ex-service man with only one lung. Help! Oh, you great useless article. What do you want to do that for, creeping in on me? Nearly gave me heart failure. You done that on purpose. I do come for some clouds of a gold sight. <laughs> a revolting sight to have to come out. <laughs> you look like a pamphlet for famine relief. <laughs> no, go and get some clouds of... What the hell have you got there? It's a sun lamp. I found it in the yard. I mended it this morning. I've been trying it out. They're good. Apart from making you brown, they bombard you with vitamins. <laughs> it's like the sun, you see. It gets into your pores and has a go at your bones. Oh, they're marvellous things. We don't get enough sun in this country. <gasps> Well, I think you must have caught a touch of it. This is an ordinary electric light bulb, you bird. <laughs> Look, 60 watts, natural pearl. <laughs> You're supposed to have an ultraviolet one in it. Oh. Ain't another good. Want it turn me brown? Of course it won't turn you brown. You could sit under that till doomsday. That won't make any difference to winner for that, will that wouldn't. <laughs> you just don't think, do you? I mean, you are a fool to yourself. Suppose there had been someone else who had come in here and seen you sitting stark naked under an ordinary electric light bulb with a pair of goggles on. They'd have carded you off straight away. <laughs> oh, Benny, there's blokes in there can't get out for much less than that. There was no book of instructions with it. I can't be expected to keep up with everything that's going on. I thought it all happened in there. I thought the bell was just to show you the thing was on. Oh, cool. <laughs> so the United Nations sending up teams of experts all over the world to instruct underdeveloped wogs. And there's people like you still knocking about over here. <laughs> well, you're, you're the sort of mentality that laughs at fuzzy wuzzies when they look behind the mirror to see who's there, aren't you? I don't look behind mirror. Oh, shut up. I was merely making a point. It was an analogy. What's that? Well, it's a way of illustrating... It is way. I'll come and do something you can understand. <laughs> something you're an expert at. It is called unloading the cart. Ah, oh, yes. Did you get a good stuff to your good day? Ah, oh, that is more like it. Now we shall see superior little white men's brains spring into action. Junk. Junk and rubbish. The tawdry remains of a tatty consumer society. You've been listening to that bloke with the glasses again, haven't you? He's a bad influence. Has he had any more money off you? Well, I choose to give the party is no concern of yours. You coming? I don't know why you want to keep on about overthrowing the government. They're doing their best. I do not wish to discuss it with you, Father. Well alone. We're doing all right, aren't we? Man does not live on washing machines alone. That's something else you heard of him, isn't it? Look, if you wish to carry on living in this degrading, free-for-all society, that is entirely up to you. I know what I want. You want to tie around the hero, that's what you want. Yes, Peter. Would you be so kind? 
How about the ground nut scheme? Yes, Dad. Hup. That didn't send down the price of peanuts, did it? No, I don't believe it did, Dad. Well, let's have less of that. What's the matter with you? Coffins! They're coffins! I know they're coffins. That's what I bought them for. They're not bad, are they? Get them out of here. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. I paid six pound five for them. I don't care what you paid for them. Get them out of here. Oh, me heart. That's <laughs> now, what are you trying to do to me? Get rid of them. Why? There's nothing wrong with them. They're perfectly good coffins. I'm a respectable rag and bone merchant, not a dealer in death. <laughs> I don't know what you're rabbiting on about them. You must be realistic. You have got to have coffins. I wonder if someone is going to need these coffins. There's nothing you or I can do about that. That is the way of the world, that is. It was ever thus. That is it. <laughs> now we might as well make a few bob out of them as let somebody else have them. They are not staying in this yard. Of course not. They're going in the house. What? <laughs> leaving them out here to get warped. What good's a warped coffin? It's you that's warped. <laughs> Better not buying coffins, but taking them into the house. Oh, no. No, no. Dad, they are going in the house, and that is all there is to it. Now, come on, give me a... I'm telling you, Harold, those coffins go into my house over my dead body. <laughs> well, that's one sale. <laughs> Which one do you fancy? Oh, there must be one here to fit you out all of you. Eh? Yeah, how about this one, eh? Look, very comfortable, no nuts holes, keeps out of the drawer. You'd like to see me in one of them, wouldn't you? You'd like to see me off. You can't wait, can you? Mine there! <laughs> I forbid you to bring that into my house. Harold, please don't do it. <laughs> You're tempting fate, Harold. Oh, really, you are talking foolish, Dad. When you come to think of it, you are a primitive little man, aren't you? <laughs> Full of little superstitions. Salt over the left shoulder, don't cross on the stairs, don't cross knives. Please don't open umbrellas in the ass. Oh, down, put your boots on the table. <laughs> the dark man must be first in the ass, New Year's Day, spitting on the coal. <laughs> And omens. Oh, my God, the omens we have had. Cross-eyed dogs. <laughs> Don't tread on a spider, otherwise it will rain. I'll never forget the day that that sparrow walk dropped dead at my feet. You said that that meant that I was going to be Prime Minister. <laughs> Don't you laugh at omens. I've seen too many of them in me day. You scoffed when them pigeons settled on Mrs. Bentley's roof, didn't you? I said, hello, that's an omen. She's not long to go. And I was right. She was dead inside 18 months. Dave, she was 102. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no difference. Them pigeons knew. Oh, good and Benny, they've got to settle somewhere. But they can't go around flying forever. What do you mean they've got legs full? If you'd have been born 200 years ago, they would have burned you. I am here to tell you that you're asking for trouble having coffins in the house. If they stay in here, this house will be a house of mourning. Well, I ain't exactly been a fun palace for the last 20 years, has it? <laughs> Straight out of Dickens, this place is. Mind you, I don't think Fagan could have lasted more than a couple of nights in this doss house. <laughs> Come to think of it, you're a little bit like him, aren't you? <laughs> Harold, my dear, what sort of junk have you got for me to die? What little trinkets have you got for me, my dear? <laughs> Harold, please get rid of them. They're an omen of doom. Oh, Dad, if they was an omen of doom, there wouldn't be a live undertaker left in the country. They'd all be stretched out in their own boxes. <laughs> have you been in a funeral shop? They have got roomfuls of coffins. It don't bother them. They're upstairs in the flat, laughing and drinking and joking. The only time they're sad, mate, is when business is slack. <laughs> That's 
different. That's their profession. And a very nice one it is too, mate. <sighs> See, there's three things that the human race has got to do. Eat, drink, and snuff it. <laughs> you're getting on any one of those, mate, and you're set up for life. <laughs> the three Bs. Beef, booze, and boxes. You can't go wrong. <laughs> you don't even have to dig your own holes. <laughs> You know, we ought to think seriously about going in for this lot full time, mate. Right? Steptoe and son. That is a marvellous name for an undertaker. Oh, Dad, I can see you now, in a top hat, walking slowly behind the cortege. <laughs> You'd make a marvellous undertaker, Dad. <laughs> you have got the right sort of miserable face for it. <laughs> You'd be a knockout with the relatives, you would. Stop that kind of talk. Stop it! Oh, you're too sensitive, mate. You want to be like me. Don't let it bother you. There's no point in worrying about it, is there? <coughs> when you have got to go, Dad, you have got to go. And if it's half as good up there as the church keeps telling us it is, we ought to be queuing up to go. <laughs> Why don't you start blaspheming? Not with coffins in the house. Well, here we are. They look quite nice, don't they? They're simple, pleasing. Aesthetically pleasing to the eye, wouldn't you say? They're a bit Scandinavian, really, don't you think? For the last time, Harold, I'm asking you to get them out of here. Right. If they stay, I go. What do you mean? I'm not sleeping in the house full of coffins. You're serious, aren't you? Yes! You would actually rather leave them be in the same house as them? I'm afraid so. Well, I didn't think it'd affect you that much. I'm sorry, Harold, it's just the way I'm built. <laughs> oh, all right, then. That's the way it's got to be. Where can I get in touch with you? <laughs> oh, callous little bleeder. <laughs> You're evil, that's what you are, evil. <laughs> I'm warning you, you leave now, you'll miss the sacrifice of the chicken. <laughs> Twelve o'clock sharp, bring your own mask. Fiend! Fiend! Throwing your poor old father out in a night like this. No, I'm not throwing you out. You can stay as long as you want to, I don't care. I can't stay, you're forcing me out. Do you think I could sleep up there now when the things were down here? Well, as long as you stay up there and these remain down here, you've got nothing to worry about, have you? Now, come on, make up your mind, I want to look up. You stand and go in. Going. Right. Where are you going to sleep? In the stable. What? With Hercules? I'd sooner sleep with him than here. Ooh. <laughs> what with all that straw and that smell? It'll be purer out there with an innocent animal than in here with the smell of evil and death. Where's me hurricane lamb? Over there. Oh, come on, Dad. You can't stay out there all night. It's only a shed. It's cold and it's damp. I don't care. I'll be all right. But what about your chest? It'll be bad for your chest. I've slept under worse conditions in the trenches. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll manage. Oh, come on, Dad. Uh, I, mean, I mean, they can't bother you. I'm not stepping foot in there's the house until they're out of here. If you like to stay there on your own and take your chance, it's up to you. Well, what's wrong with them? I went to down the little bits of wood nailed together into a certain shape. You must have very little imagination, that's all I can say. I remember seeing a play once. It was about this bloke. He slept in house with a coffin. And when they found him next morning, he was a white-haired, raving maniac. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep well. <laughs> Oh, well, leave the door unlocked in case you want to come in. Yeah. <coughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> Move over and give us that bleeding blanket. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, God, the rubbish they have pumped into him. He'll believe anything after a while, he will.
Is there anybody there? <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> oh, I should have bought the old lot. Still, I couldn't have got 300 in here. <laughs> White haired raving maniac. He'll wake up a maniac if that horse starts jumping about in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh, I better get off. Oh, God. I've got 400 political pamphlets to fold up tonight. Come over, see if you was all right. I was worried about you. Of course I'm all right. I was well away then. 
I was having a marvellous dream about Mary Pickford. <laughs> what do you want? D don't you think you ought to come in? Come in where? In the ass. I'm not going in there, I told you. Well, I think you ought to, Dad. It's a pouring with ride. Not in here, it's not. <laughs> well, it's ever so cold. I'm not. It's lovely in here. Go back to bed and leave me alone. <laughs> the lights has gone, you know. Probably needs another shilling in the meter. Yes, yes, well, that's it, you see. I, I haven't got any. They're in the vase. In the front room? Yeah. <laughs> Dad, I think you ought to come in. No. But look, 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 Dad, I can't let you stay out here on your own all night. I mean, if you was to have one of your turns in the middle of the night and I wasn't here to look after you, I'd never forgive myself. What are you talking about? I'm not going to have one of my turns. I feel fine. Just let me go back to sleep. Mary's waiting for me. No, I'm sorry. I've got my duty to do. I mean, if you insist on staying out here, I shall just have to share the general discomfort with you. That is all. You come prepared, didn't you? Not at all. I brought these for you in case you wasn't comfortable. Liar! They're your beds. I recognise the blankets. You wouldn't bring your stuff out here for me. Look, I'm not prepared to sit here arguing a toss with you all night. It is very late. <sighs> That's better. It's quite nice in here, really, isn't it? <laughs> Good night, Dad. Good night. Dad? What? I hope you didn't misinterpret my reasons for coming out here tonight. No, I don't think so. I mean, I wouldn't like you to think I was here because I was frightened. Oh, no, of course not. It's just that I was worried about you out here in this thunderstorm. Yeah, all right. Go to sleep. I mean, I could have stayed in there all night if it hadn't been for you. I mean, it doesn't bother me. Well, what are you going on about it for? I just don't want you to think I was scared, that's all. No. All right. Good night, then. Good night. <laughs> Dad? Now what? If I get rid of them coffins tomorrow, will you come back in the house? Yes. Oh, all right, then. I'll get rid of them. Good. Just for you, you understand? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you, Harold. That is all right. I still don't understand what you were scared about. Still, if you're scared, you're scared. That's all there is to it. You can't help it. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, we can't help the made. We are made, can we? I mean, it's just that some of us are not quite so strong-willed as others. That's all. We can't help it. So it's all right now, Dad. I'm out here with you. You're all right. I'll look after you, mate. <laughs> the coffins is over there. And we're over here. <laughs> I wouldn't let it bother you anymore, Dad. 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 Wake up. Don't go sleep for me. <laughs> Dad. Dad, wake up. I want to drink a water. Don't have to drink a water. Dad.